Well, welcome to a new Harry's Farm video and all sorts has been going on since I did the last report. First of all, the weather is still playing tricks on us. We had a ridiculously cold April and May has turned out to be damp. Um, I think we've recorded 70 mil of rain so far and I think we're the 15th of May at the moment. Just so different to last year, but that's had a dramatic effect on the crops as we'll have a look at this oilseed rape here, I'm going to discuss that. Um, the wheat and the barley has shot up as well and there's various things happening there. But the one thing I also wanted to mention, NRM Laboratories. I spoke to them a few weeks ago because I wanted to investigate the amount of carbon we were locking up in the soil to better understand sequestration and what a crop um, puts back into the ground and how it compares to woodland and that sort of thing. And the results, I sent those samples off. We sampled three fields, sent them off, and the results have came back. They came back yesterday. And having looked at it, I'm actually going to do a dedicated video on the whole subject. But I wanted just to um, tell you a little bit of what these soil results, what they showed me, because I find them utterly fascinating. Did three fields in all. We did a permanent pasture next down by the brook. It's been in grass for as long as living memory has, can have it. The cattle are grazing on it. And that, unsurprisingly, came out with the highest organic matter in the soil. We sampled down to 30 centimetres and 11.2 and 12.8% organic matter in that field. Contrast that with this, which is fuzz ground. And this is normally, I think, the, not one of my better fields. So I wanted to test that. And that's 5.4 to 5.1% organic matter in this field. And I think that's because my next door neighbour over there has livestock and he's always after a bit of straw. And he, when he spots a um, field of wheat in here, they have the straw. And that's what the NRM laboratories are telling me. It's that actually taking the straw off has reduced the amount of organic matter for the worms to you know, munch on, etc. So there's more, so much information in here that I think it's worthy of another video. But that's the sort of information I got from this. The other thing I learnt was the actual amount of carbon in the soil. So the organic carbon stock in tonnes per hectare, which is fascinating that we're all talking about tonnes of CO2 and all the release and cows, methane and the effect of that. There's more to do with that, which I'll touch on the video. The permanent pasture where those cattle, those bad beef cows that are doing things to the climate, that's actually where the most carbon is locked up in the soil and the permanent pasture is locked up 159 tonnes of carbon in the soil per hectare. 120 hectares, we've locked up about 20,000 tonnes of carbon in the soil from the permanent pasture and that's drawing carbon, carbon dioxide um, from the atmosphere via photosynthesis, producing the bulk, the cows doing their business on the ground, adding the organic matter, the worms chomping on it and just builds up a, a residue of organic matter and carbon in the soil and it's highest on the permanent pasture and it's actually lowest on this where we're arable farming and taking the straw off. Did a third field and that one is pretty close to the permanent pasture where we haven't taken the straw off. So lots of lessons and I say I think worthy of a separate video. Now, the oilseed rape has surprised us by make, staging this a remarkable comeback. As you can see, I have a field of oilseed rape. It's yellow. It doesn't look quite so good if you put a drone above it, but um, it's pretty good and dramatically better than expected. Over that way, we didn't actually pull all the fertiliser on that field, so we are sacrificing the field. But the dilemma I have is what is this going to yield? You can see that pod set is now sort of fairly active. And what's happened with these cool um, conditions, the plant has continued to flower and there's branches coming out and there's no real stress on the plant because it hasn't been super hot, hasn't, it's, it's got plenty of moisture. With 70 mil of rain in the last two or three weeks, moisture is a non-issue. The only thing I do notice, we've got something called pod abort. So you can see they haven't actually set. And that could be the wet weather, the bees not very active, or it could be um, frost damage. But then you get other ones and they have set. So it's a slight head scratch at why some of them haven't set and some have but I'm 
chuffed to bits the way the rape has responded to this wet and actually quite cool weather. Um, the only dilemma I've got is it's been very open because of that cabbage stem flea beetle attack and all those stunted plants. It, it didn't actually smother the weeds and I can see a lot. If you look here I've got Oh, poppies growing up, I've got grass growing up and that's all because we put a herbicide on in the autumn and that um, is a residual and it keeps the weeds um, suppressed. That's gone away now, it's broken down in the soil so it's got light coming in because it's not a particularly thick crop and the weeds have got going so we're, we'll have a dilemma soon. I think this is peak oilseed rape and in a few weeks time we're going to have weeds growing out of it and it's not going to look quite as pretty but at the moment I'm very chuffed. And the other thing that's happened is the price has just gone berserk. The whole market has woken up to the fact that oilseed rape is a serious issue. The yields are going to be dramatic down, the acres is dramatic down. And this crop last harvest was worth around £320. For harvest 21, we're looking at around £450. So a 40% rise in price for the oilseed rape which will make a bit of a difference to the cash flow from what I was expecting from this crop. So sort of good news, but I, I think there's these weeds to deal with. The wheat's interesting as well, so we'll go up and have a look at that now. Here's a bit of an indicator how the rape has grown up since you were last here. This is where I was doing those motorbike videos coming storming across the field. I wouldn't be doing that now. Um, it's really grown up quite remarkably in the last few weeks. Almost looks like a proper field of rape. Well, this is the winter wheat and it really looks good. We've just put the final dressing of um, nitrogen on it. That sort of greened it up. Um, it then, has, as I say, has rained. So you know it's taken up the nitrogen and it's all looking pretty clean and all good, really. Um, and it's just, the only thing it's not doing is really sort of growing with the vigour you would expect it to. And that's all down to temperature. This time last year, we had many days in the 20 degrees, 24 degrees, we're looking at the diary. And uh, this year, we're just not getting those warm days. But I thought I'd just show you what, it, what stage it's at, because I, I mentioned this, that it's a stage called stem extension is what it's going through at the moment. And it's quite fun to have a look. And it's, and it's reaching for the stars, as it were. And think of it like a telescope, with the sections of a telescope, and you pull out a telescope. Well, that's basically what this wheat plant is doing at the moment. And, it, and you have these sort of nodes, as they're termed, these sort of harder bits of the grass. Oh, I'll just cut a bit of the ear off. Okay, there's the top of the ear. You can just see it there. I didn't mean to do that. But that is the ear just of enemy. So I've got one node, two node, three nodes, fourth node is actually there and there is the wheat ear just developing so that'll be popping out in a in a few weeks time but um, it, the thing that's actually happening in 21 it's been really quite cool in late April May and you I would expect this crop to be taller it's about five six inches shorter than I would expect it's going through the stages but it's not very tall um, and we really need some sunshine and some warmth to get the full potential of this crop. But I'm not complaining of the last couple of years when we had to deal with drought and very sad looking crops. I would much rather deal with this, that um, we have the potential. We have an even uh, crop right across. It's tillered out well. It's all developing. We've kept disease under control. We haven't put a growth regulator on because it, there was no need. We might, we've got one in the armory we can put on later and the price of wheat is high. This is a bread making variety, but even feed wheat is 165 now for off the combine uh, harvest. And that is, well, about 25 pounds higher than it was last year. And that year was about 20 pounds higher than the previous year. So good news on the wheat. It's gonna be the banker that all farmers sort of are hoping for in 21 does look like the winter wheat but the winter barley is not doing bad either. So we're gonna have a look at that next. Okay, this is the winter barley, and you're probably thinking, well, it looks like the wheat. It's not, the, you can tell a winter barley because it's, it's, it's the first crop basically you combine. So it's a bit further forward, bit taller, 
and it sort of has a spikery appearance. The flag leaf isn't quite so big. And we call this the flag leaf because this is the last leaf to come before the ear appears. And if I look around here, there we go, you can just see the barley awns just about to appear. So that is the flag leaf. And that's the one that gives all the yield. That's the one you protect the most. And this basically, this barley has gone berserk. It's a hybrid variety, which means um, you put less seed on and it um, has more vigour and then it, it, it tillers out more. It's a balance of whether it's the best, highest yielding um, root, but I think it works really well on this ground. And I am chuffed a bit with the look of this crop. This is a real, no di real disease pressure on it. It's weed free, it's healthy, and it's just lapped up the weather conditions just recently. The slight worry is, are we just growing like a sardis crop? Are we gonna get the yield? As I've said before, to get the yield we need that sunshine we need those sunshine hours like we had last year to pack the yield into this but my goodness we've got some potential this year and we haven't really had this potential since well 2018 so i think i'm quite excited about harvest 21 all in all all looking good yes the rate um isn't as good as i hope but it's turned the corner and has, and has come a, back a long way prices are high um just want um, we've got plenty of moisture now we just want some sunshine as I'm sure all of us do with those outside eating areas and all the rest huddling under our umbrellas and thinking it's a bit chilly but uh, hopefully we're going to get some warp soon so I'm very grateful to NRM for those soil samples they did I'm going to do a dedicated video on those if you want to learn more do check their website and if you want your soil testing then I had the Carbon Check Plus done. That's £35 a sample to get that test back, and that tells you everything. There's a um, lower one, a £25 sample. You can do Carbon Check. It just doesn't give you all the organic carbon content and that sort of thing. And what's going to be really interesting is whether we're going to be targeted on it in the future as farmers. We don't know. So there you go. Lots of potential on the farm. Um, you'll be joining us in a couple of weeks for that dedicated soil sample survey. And then we're next one, we'll probably have this all out in the air, waving in the wind and some sunshine would be really nice. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe. More videos coming along very soon.